Populist Party engaged in the electoral campaign for the next European Parliament are quite diverse. They can be from the right and from the left. But they have something in common, which is a denunciation of the Brussels Europe, uh, as stated by our policy brief by Yves Surel, with, let's say, sub-families. Uh, there is a first critic of this uh, Brussels Europe as a system, a so-called anti-democratic system, with a negative impact on national sovereignties or national identities. So that is the first source of these uh, populist forces. And there is a second source, which is the denunciation of the free movement principle. The free movements of people, for example, then the migrants, be they from the European Union or, or from outside, and the free movement in general, free movement of goods, services, capitals. And this is the denunciation of the ultra-liberalism of Brussels. So roughly speaking, different families from the, rest, from the left and from the right, but uh, united with this uh, common uh, denunciation of Brussels Europe. If we look at the populists today at the European Parliament, we can say that they have roughly 130 seats, be they from the radical left, the extreme right, the autonomistic right, or the conservative. Um, then they have 130 seats. They could reach maybe over 200 seats, which is quite a substantial progression. Um, but we need to focus uh, on the eight most populated countries to know where most seats could be won by the populist forces. Because even with high scores in, let's say, Finland, for example, or, or Greece, there won't be many, many seats in addition to what exists already because these two countries don't, don't have many seats at the European Parliament. And the second thing we have to look at is the comparison with the 2009 results. With the contrast, maybe between the UKIP on the one end, the UKIP had already a good score in 2009. So a new good score won't change the broad picture in terms of seats for the UKIP. But conversely, in France, for example, the National Front had only three seats and a bit more than 6% in 2009. And in this case, in this election, it will have, it will have much, much more. So uh, a much more substantial impact in some countries. The main characteristics of the populist forces is that they are divided. Uh, if we look at the present European Parliament, they are divided into three groups and an unattached. Uh, the radical left, then, the European Conservative and Reformist group, the uh, Europe for Freedom and Difference group, with the UKIP inside, and an unattached with the National Front, let's say the extreme right. It could be exactly the same in the next European Parliament, with an exception, meaning a new extreme right group, as in the past, could be formed. So there would be four groups instead of three plus the non-attached. Uh, but there are uncertainties uh, on uh, different uh, forces. Let's say, look at the alternative for Dutchland party, for example, which could be classified as a populist party, meaning anti-Brussels Europe. Where will, where will they go? We don't know yet. And it's quite the same for uh, the movement Cinque Stelle in Italy, the Pepe Grillo movement. Where will, we, where will it go? So we don't know yet. So the only certainty as regards the populist forces is that they will remain divided in the next European Parliament. The impact of the populist upswing on the functioning of the European Parliament should not be overestimated. Because even with roughly 200 seats, it won't uh, prevent the, the, the coalitions, the majority coalition based on the preferences of the overwhelming majority of the European citizens to function as they did in the past. So let's say we'll have a more vocal uh, European Parliament, but uh, which will be able to decide on the, the basis of coalition from the left and the right as usual. The impact of the populist upswing on the campaign is more ambivalent uh, because on the one hand we could see the mainstream parties uh, taking on board the positions of the populist forces. But on the other hand we could also see 
the defender of the European construction foundations getting more mobilized just to promote these basic principles such as the free movement of people, uh, the spirit of reconciliation and the ba basic idea that unity makes forces in a globalized world. So we'll have to wait for the end of the campaign to know which one of the two effects will prevail.